Um, it's always hard after a big period of performance. You sort of uh, want to make sure that you're not holding on to yesterday's winners. Um, fortunately, we've rotated the portfolio very significantly over the last six months. Um, a lot of those stocks that gave us a huge boost over the last uh, reporting season in particular, we've rotated out of a lot of those names. You know, the share prices might have more than doubled over that period. Uh, the stocks that we think are exciting today, um, a lot of them fall into four categories. Uh, the first one is that reflationary trade that we were chatting about before. Uh, companies like Copper Stocks, like HUD Bay and Tech Resources, which are listed in Canada, and also some of the financials, like Wells Fargo, which is listed in the US, or QBE. Um, second area would be in the energy space. Um, it's both in the new energy and also in the old energy um, that we think is attractive. Um, in the new energy, we think lithium has really attractive fundamentals. Um, everyone would know about this structural shift towards electric vehicles, which is now starting to accelerate. And we think that the lithium market is finally tight for the first time in many years because you're starting to see the demand increase and the supply is taking a bit of time to respond. And we think that companies like Mineral Resources and Oricobra, which recently merged with Galaxy, are really well placed to benefit from that shift. And then interestingly, on the old energy space, which you would think is probably uh, you know, yesterday's story in terms of oil, we actually think that the outlook for oil is really positive because essentially during the crisis, a lot of the oil majors like BP and Shell and Chevron all cut their CapEx budgets by at least 30% and also their OPEX budgets by 30%. And what that means is that they're going to struggle to just maintain production going forward and at the same time, oil demand through driving and also flying is going to start to accelerate over the next 12 months. And you're already seeing inventory declines globally for oil and therefore, we think the supply-demand balance is actually going to look really positive um, as we move out of COVID and the vaccine uh, rollout occurs globally. The last area um, is the, the restructure stories. We think that companies like Tabcorp, Link and News Corp are three great examples of companies that are looking inwardly at what can we do to highlight the value of our business. Um, they've typically got non-core assets they could sell or they might be spinning out part of their business through a demerger. Um, so in the case of Link, they've got PEXA, which is an incredibly high quality, you know, exciting business uh, for property conveyancing. They've got um, Tabcorp with its lotteries business, which I think is dramatically undervalued in some parts. And lastly, in the case of News Corp, um, everyone knows and loves REA and Realtor.com, which is the number two player in the US in that property uh, portal space. So we think um, those restructures are going to come to the fore over the next 12 months. And um, Maybe the last area, so we've been through the reflation story, we've been through new energy and old energy and also the restructures. I guess the last area is uh, online sports betting in the US. Um, it's a part of the market that I think is just at the start of a massive structural boom that we think will last at least a decade. Um, for anyone who's been following it, you'd see companies like PointsBet or Entain or Flutter that are really starting to get a lot of momentum. Um, basically, you're seeing state by state in the US, they open up for sports betting. And you know, in a weird way, Australia is a leader in uh, understanding the sports betting market because we've been doing it in Australia for years. And interestingly, there's a lot of in-play betting in the US. Um, it's allowed in the US, it's, it's basically illegal in Australia. And the addressable market when you have in-play betting triples or quadruples the size of the market. And we think that people are underappreciating how big that's going to be um, over the coming five to 10 years. And you know, two of the stocks that we really like, um, one of them's listed in Australia, that's points bet and one of them's listed in the UK, which is Entain. Um, they're both doing some really exciting stuff um, operationally, and we think that that's another um, big structural winner um, that we'll hopefully benefit from over the coming years. Um, I think there's, there's two things. One is the pie is just gonna keep growing exponentially going forward. So you've got more and more states opening up, and then within that, you've got more and more people taking up um, the opportunity to bet on a game, and it's becoming part of the entertainment to watch a game and bet on you know, each set in the tennis or who's gonna win the next quarter in the basketball, and and you know, if you're an NFL fan or an NBA fan, it's really become part of watching the game. Um, the second one is that the guys who are operating best, who are executing well, who have the best technology, who have the best management teams, are the ones that are clearly winning market share. So whether it's Entain, which have gone from basically nowhere to now having almost 18% market share on average across the US, or whether it's the points back guys that recently did a five-year exclusive deal with NBC, which is the number one sports telecaster in the US, and they're starting to see the benefits of that come through. Um, we think those two companies are really well positioned. Uh, but the market leader Flutter, we think is all, also well placed. It's not a stock we own today, even though we really like the company and the management. Uh, we're hoping the valuation um, gets into the zone and uh, we'd happily buy that. But we think that those are three of the companies that are best placed to win the market.